I was born in San Diego, California, but I only lived there for three years, and then my family moved to Waseca, Minnesota, so that's a small town in southern Minnesota, and that's where I spent my whole life until I went to college. Some of my influences were definitely musical theater. I really loved all kinds of musical theater and participated in it. I, when I was eight, I was in a production of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat for a community theater. And that was a huge experience for me. It just really, really struck me with the, the music bug. And I really, really uh, got addicted to singing and performing and being involved in music. I, my parents, I would say really liked prog rock. So I think the kind of, um, 70s prog rock uh, albums were playing in our house a lot and that was influential to me and I mean I remember like em Emerson Lake and Palmer were uh, some of their more experimental albums were were often played in our house I would say I started getting involved in music singing in choir then I uh, started oboe when I was 10. I, I'd, I'd say, I would say dabbled on piano before. My mom plays piano and she teaches piano, but I was never, um, I didn't really seriously take lessons until I was 12. And then, uh, so I was starting to get more serious about music and really into playing oboe. And then I decided to get serious about piano too. And so I um, took lessons pretty seriously through middle school and high school. And I was involved in, well, I played piano in jazz band in school, and I uh, was in every possible choir and band and uh, just very involved in school music. And so th those are the, the things that got me started. Though in, and also in marching band, I was in the, the pit percussion section, so I played marimba and cymbals and vibes and other percussion instruments and I felt that uh, that was really beneficial for me as a composer because I had personal experience playing percussion and knew what it what those techniques were what those sounds were and also how to um, how percussionists like to see the score and or you know notate the different instruments and uh, so that all contributed to my my early music education. I remember my senior year, I actually kind of wrote down my first piece, which was for a project in my Shakespeare class. It was uh, set in the text um, from uh, Much Ado About Nothing, it, and I chose a text that was kind of about gender bending and d disguises and the... Uh, so it was a very sort of traditionally tonal classical period kind of uh, harmonic language, kind of aria feeling, but it had sort of a conceptual twist because the person who was singing was a soprano in drag as a man who then had the kind of an offstage baritone singing some of the notes while that while the singer lip synced those notes so this person had this sort of in impossibly big range um and yeah so that was really my first notated piece when i started college i was a music education major and i definitely um enjoyed that but then I took composition my my sophomore year and I really really you know felt it was sort of meant to be like that was what I really wanted to do and so I ch that's when I um, changed my major to composition and uh, I'm definitely glad that I was in a program where it wasn't you know competitive to get into the composition major or anything it was sort of if you showed initiative you could do it and that uh, that's when I when I committed to it.
the first time I heard of Kronos Quartet was listening to their recording of um, Different Trains by Steve Reich. And I definitely remember that really powerfully because it was in my um, 20th century music history class in undergrad. And it was, uh, of course, framed as like a really big deal and a very uh, monumental piece of music. And it and it was very impactful to me. So that was uh, so I always thought Kronos Quartet was a really big deal. I know that they first sort of experienced my music through my string quartet, Many Many Cadences, and that is a very playful piece, is a very kind of like energetic and obsessive piece, and also, as I was mentioning before, it's one of my pieces that takes common practice period tonal material and uh, recontextualizes it in sort of a surreal um, and you know rambunctious way that's that's supposed to, that's kind of triggering our memory and triggering things that we're familiar with but in a new unfamiliar context and so I think that that's something that we of course can do very freely in the 20th in the 21st century and um, that's I, I think those those elements of that piece were probably what uh, what attracted Kronos to my music. I think of the string quartet as it really uh, the one of the perfect vehicles for my music because usually, well, string quartets are just very agile, very um, capable of doing you know so many different textures, different sounds. They have such a big range. They have um, the dense enough, you know, enough people to have a lot of density and counterpoint, but yet the agility of a small ensemble. I think it's like really fun to write for string quartet because you don't have the sort of um, challenges of writing for a soloist where you, you know, can, can't have them play all the notes that you want at once and you have you know plenty of uh plenty of like territory for everyone to everyone to cover this is one of the most sort of magical and ineffable parts of composing is coming up with a germ of an idea that that uh, that is good enough to make it into the final piece. I definitely edit my ideas a lot or I kind of try to generate several different ideas and maybe knowing that only one of them will make it into the final piece. For my piece Vertebrae, I, um, I was thinking about the concept of a scale and what uh, what is the difference between a melody and a scale and kind of um, pl playing with sounds that are so sort of like quiet and percussive that you're not sure if they're a sort of centered pitch and how can that uh, not or that less pitched material be organized into scales and so that's a bit of a an abstract idea, but I knew that I could do a lot with that musically. Yeah, so Vertebrae is, as I mentioned, um, inspired by the, the concept of a scale, and so it ends up using a lot of different kinds of scales and uh, with sort of very different um, different kinds of count of um, counterpoint, be it sort of very uh, blurry heterophony to more kind of um, driving, someone has the melody, someone has accompaniment sort of textures. And my kind of, I wrote a, a little poem in the score that was about like a, a prehistoric person playing 
a bone xylophone, which is sort of a uh, a stereotypical kind of image. And but the reason I was thinking about it is because I um, I wanted to channel that dry, clinky sort of creepy sound of of uh, Colonio Batuto and uh, use that as one of the sort of main sounds where every uh, but various gradations of that sound so you know everybody playing Colenio maybe uh, just one or two people playing Colenio various people sort of exploding out of that texture and out of that very quiet um, dynamic and yeah and one reason I wanted to use Colenio is because it's very quiet and like I wanted to have a really huge dynamic range in this piece where you have sort of very quiet overall texture and then suddenly these like surprising sounds are popping out of the texture and um, the yeah I'd say the the overall piece kind of starts really quiet and and uh, and mysterious and takes more form takes more uh, distinct like formal identity as it goes on, becoming more kind of extroverted ideas that eventually, um, you know, are sort of loud and in your face. In this piece, all of the parts are very, very constant notes. You know, there aren't very many rests in this piece. So one of the biggest challenges was finding places to do page turns and I had to really reorganize the score and kind of create funny repeat signs in order to uh, make the page turns possible. But after a lot of trial and error, I actually was able to get the parts down to four pages, so there's only one page turn. And uh, so people should just know that it was a challenge, but we were able to do it. String players who are learning this piece can definitely, um, in, I guess, enjoy hopefully playing a lot of different roles within the piece, that there's not one particular thing that the first violin does that nobody else does. You know, they're all very integrated into, uh, into a, um, an equal texture and the I, I hope that students just enjoy playing with all the all the different um, timbres and perhaps enjoy like finding new nuances within the tech the sounds like within um, within Colenio for example like what are all of the small nuances that you can control while still being in that sound world and um, I hope that they feel welcome to like make their own uh, interpretive choices. There are definitely like certain choices that the Kronos Quartet made that are really awesome for the recording, but other the students who play it should also feel free to, um, to you know make their own version of it. Part of my composer life, but not really the same, is that I do installation art. So I make, uh, I've made a series of harmonica playing inflatable sculptures that are um, interactive. And I've done three of those so far, but it's definitely a project that I plan to continue in different iterations and different sort of visual designs. But so these are, uh, sculptures made of vinyl that have deconstructed harmonicas affixed to the insides and as they inflate in the air escapes they create these drone textures. Enjoy making music, find your, uh, feel free to like pursue whatever kind of musical direction you want to pursue, but be open to new things, explore things, be like 
responsive to your um, your mentors. They have like a lot of knowledge and they want to expose you to really awesome music. And I would just say, if you, um, yeah, if you have the sort of chops to play a piece like this, you're already like an advanced musician. So you should just uh, keep discerning what uh, what music means in your life and find find your people where you can uh, enjoy that creative life together.